So hello everybody and welcome to Flamingo. So today I'm joined by Fiona Grieve. So me and Fiona have known each other for ages, because yeah. a long time, because we used to go to the same dance school. But we're not sitting in Fiona's flat today to talk about dancing. We're going to talk about her experiences when she went to Calais to volunteer with refugees. So you're actually in your final year of studying to train to become an architect. Yeah. Yeah, finally I have my Masters, yeah. Ah, so wasn't it through your studies that you discovered more about the migrant crisis? So I kind of always was quite interested in it, but I never really looked too much, I guess because you hear mm. so much about it. And I guess I don't really agree with a lot of opinions about refugees, but fine. <laughs> Everyone's entitled to their opinion. Exactly, and that's what we're going to discuss, just exactly. But um, from your perspective. I guess I started looking at it through my dissertation tutor like tutorial group like I went into the group wanting to look at refugees uh -huh. and the migrant crisis um and then I just sort of got more and more interested and sort of started to learn more about it um and then yeah so that's how I kind of it was yeah part of my dissertation ah so like me and probably other people watching I've only been informed about what's happening in Calais through the news or through the media but mm. from your perspective as someone who's physically gone and seen it what what is actually happening there I think well it's diff obviously different all over the world mm. but um in Calais they sort of no one's really allowed to settle okay so they're constantly I say evicting them they mm. take their forms of shelter so they take their tents away from them and and things like that so there's just I think it varies, but when I was there, I think there was about a thousand or so people in the yeah. area who had no physical form of accommodation other than a tent, and they were just living on the streets. I mean, when even when I was driving around Calais, um, you would see men, mm -hmm. a lot of them are quite young, probably younger than us, just on the sides of the roads, just sort of hanging around because they've got nothing yeah. to do and nowhere to go. So these people have come from war time torn countries yeah, just they've travelled the all world. through Europe they've arrived in Calais and then their main mission is to get to, to get to the, the UK, UK yeah to seek asylum yeah. or for safety and that they've risked everything to get there they've risked so. their lives and I think like one of the key things that I really sort of got from the situation so many people are just so ang like ang there's an anger about it uh -huh. uh, for various reasons and you just kind of have to remember, like, if someone's willing to put themselves on a boat yeah. that's a very high chance of not surviving, then it can't be, like, their situation can't be good, like, obviously. And, like, they're risking their lives to get here. So I think people do need to be a lot more aware of that. Mm. So last year it was that you went there and yes. you helped the refugees. So as a volunteer, your day to day living, what did you have to do? Um, so I only I only went for a week. I couldn't afford to go for any longer because of my studies and working and everything. Yeah, very busy. But, um, I so I spent so within the warehouse they have loads of different charities and you can kind of do all sorts of things. But I spent the first maybe three days, three or four days of my time there. Um, helping in the kitchen oh. so I worked for the called Ref refugee community kitchen and they basically cook dinner a hot meal for everyone in Calais and Dunkirk every day so there's like that's like a lot of dinners yeah thousands <laughs> of people like it's an industrial kitchen and I'm talking about like it's n it's not fun jobs you're doing you are literally cutting hundreds of onions or peeling hundreds of onions or cutting garlic or things like that but it doesn't really matter because it's so important mm. what you're doing and they make such delicious meals <laughs> they either we they do this thing where um any leftover food well, they usually have a bit of leftover food mm. uh the next day the volunteers have it for lunch oh. and it's so delicious like it was some of the best food I ever eaten, and everyone there is like amateur cooks. Yeah, so it's, so it's amazing. You have to go with experience. Exactly, you're just going to help. And exactly, and like yeah, you'll be like if you, if you're there a long time, then you get into it and you become more of a sh like a chef yeah. if you're properly cooking. But if you're just there for a few days, it's just to get that like, you come cut some onions or whatever. But it all helps to get the food done. Um, and then I also worked in they called it, we called it Tent World. Okay. So basically, um, at the end of festival season, they pick up all of the leftover tents because people can't be bothered to pack them up and take yeah. them home. 
and they take them and they take them to Calais and then volunteers will put them up and make sure all of the pegs are there, all of the poles are there, the inners, the outers, there's no disgusting bodily fluid, there was sick in them, oh, like some so of them. So clean them all up, make them yeah, nice. clean them all up, scrub them up, put them all up, make sure everything's together, then we would package them up basically, so you'd yeah. like wrap it all up, put all the poles up. We also would tag them, so they're doing this initiative at the moment trying to tag the tents to say they belong to the charity so the charity when they get confiscated can get uh, them back so at the moment the police take the police them, the take them. Yeah. yeah so they'll they'll go out and they'll give them to people and the tents will get taken eventually it's a sort of a tactic that the mm. french police are doing i mean i don't know a huge amount about it you no. probably have to read about it but like this is roughly we were tagging them to make sure that they could get them back so it wasn't a complete waste of your so at least they like they could get the tents back and then check they're all okay and redistribute them yeah. rather than just them getting chucked in the bin and like yeah. what's the point of recycling a tent yeah it's if just it's a... going to get binned and yeah. whatever so later. at least if they go back to the charity and the then... charity can collect them back up and whatever so it was there's a whole sort of law property thing I yeah don't know, huge so those were your two main jobs doing yeah but they had loads of other jobs and with the tents yeah there was various other yeah, things there was, you could they get had a it. place called soho oh. which was a, they were basically um stitch up broken items uh -huh. so, or repurpose things so things like a pair of trousers that would come in that the refugees uh they like people like, have a very good awareness of what sort of things people like to yeah. wear so if the item isn't sort of suitable then it goes to soho and they might repurpose it or they put it into like they have a charity shop oh. within the warehouse and volunteers can pay like we're talking like 50p a pound a couple of pounds for this item of clothing and then obviously the money goes back so into the charity true. um and yeah and then there's obviously the huge distribution sorting where they literally sort through donations constantly and make sure things were appropriate and things like that because i mean you have to remember like the places these people come from uh -huh. like they're not they're, they're desperate people but they're not like desperate to the point where there's no. they will wear like anything like, they've still got a, dignity exactly and that's yeah. a, like i had the issue so i did a big collection round at my work before okay. i went and people i said like there's a very specific list of stuff to donate and I can't stress enough how important it is to keep that list because uh -huh. people were just like, well, they're desperate. They'll take anything. And I'm like, that's not the point. No. Like, yeah. you may be desperate, but there's still like a dignity is a huge thing. And you lose your dignity and you lose a lot more than just like your material items. Yeah. And it's things like strap tops. Like these people come from conservative cultures. Like it's not suitable. They're not suitable. Like or things with logos on like. You, yeah. Like you don't want someone like you a ref you might a refugee walking around with a slogan anti police or something like yeah, it's not you're asking for trouble yeah it's, you have to be sending the right message so exactly. they can get the help that they need exactly. and so people can donate items like you said you went round your work you fill, filled up your car didn't you yeah my yeah Drove my to car <laughs> <laughs> it was heaving I got called over at uh, customs like what is all this stuff in your car but it was fine it was fine they were just like okay let's go <laughs> okay good so there we go so people go all the time and you can just donate and there's all loads of information yeah. online about what's specific to donate and what's helpful yeah and what's not and you don't even have to take it yourself to calais there are people doing this route with vans with everything all the time oh. so on you can look online they have all over london all over i think all over the country pretty much there's like drop-off points okay so you could drop off your donations and someone i don't know who they'll collect it and there's take a it system off. in place there's a system yes and even if like a lot of people uh, over summer you go on the ferry driving mm. off to france it's like five ten minutes from the ferry port oh. it's a minor detour and you could as long as you like email them you can literally just drop off a bag of donations mm -hmm. and every little helps really and like collect rounds like, we when i was there there were people coming in who would done the trip and were just dropping stuff off and like families were coming in and they were on their holidays but they were just dropping off a bag of donations sure. so you as we said you discovered and learnt more about it through your studies however yeah. why did you, instead of just reading about it why did you take the initiative and physically feel that you wanted to go and see it for me i have obviously got quite strong opinions on the topic but I just felt like I knew that this trip was highly unlikely to benefit my dissertation uh -huh. because 
it wasn't something that I could readily write about. I mean, I study architecture, yeah, like buildings, exactly, <laughs> like a warehouse or a lack. Like, there's a lot of my dissertation was about strategy and things like that, but I knew there wasn't going to be a huge amount that I would benefit from. Uh -huh. But I did personally felt that I couldn't justify in my mind having these opinions and feeling so strongly about it and not doing anything. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I had minimal, I had to work a lot over summer, so I had minimal time, but I was like, I'm gonna at least go yeah, for a good. week. Yeah. And I, yeah, it was the best thing I did. And it makes such a difference to physically see it rather than just yes. read about it or watch a video. And you meet people that have been there a long time and they know so much and they, they'll take, they're so great. Like they'll take you through field training and they'll teach you what it's like to be out with these people and like to go out and meet the refugees and stuff. Uh -huh. And like things to say, things not to say, like you're not there to upset someone. Uh -huh. And everyone wants to be like, yeah, what's your story? Where are you from? But that's like, you don't know someone's past and these people have had the most traumatic things happen yeah. to them. And for them, to, like, they were just teaching you about the fact that you actually, it's really insensitive to go, where are you from? Because it's, it's their life. Exactly. And, and they've lived this life and you're just bringing up all those emotions. Yeah. But it was still amazing that the charity would sit with you, would talk to you about it, tell you stuff. And then you, we'd, I did get the chance to go out on distribution. Oh. So you went with a specific charity then, is that how you organised it? Yeah, so I just literally googled online, there's loads of charities in Calais, but Help Refugees kind of a, a big international, they've got a, a big backing, like their founders are quite famous people as well, oh, yeah. so, um, and I went through them and like they are very connected in the warehouse with loads of other charities as uh -huh. well, so it was... It was quite simple to organise then. Yeah, they've got it all set out online so easily, like you basically just buy your ticket to get to Calais, whether you go on the bus or whatever. You, there's a Facebook page they've set up that you can say, I'm looking to go to Calais from here. I picked up two girls from who went to Bristol University and I picked them up and I drove them and oh. split the fer ferry with them and they paid for some of my petrol and they're really lovely girls and we got on really well. And yeah. like when we were there, like it was nice to have someone I kind of knew, boat. yeah, um, which was great and then, so it's so easy to do and even with like staying if you stay there a long time what help. about accommodation where did you so i started out in a hostel uh -huh. which i didn't like <laughs> it wasn't great it was like very like it was a hostel that was huge mm -hmm. so like vast quantities of people and there was about four of us in the entire building so it was horrible and it was quite expensive for what it yeah. was like, it wasn't a bad accommodation no. but it's not really what you want and then I, they had a big booking coming in. I'm guessing it was a school or something. Uh -huh. um, and I moved into an Airbnb and I, uh -huh. the Airbnb was great. This woman had converted the top floor of her terraced house into this place basically for volunteers. It was really uh -huh. cheap and we all just had single beds. And there was about five of us in this tiny little uh -huh. com uh, compact flat and we had a kitchen so we could cook so we didn't have to worry about buying food but if you're there a long time help refugees do have caravans and campsites you oh. can camp or you can get in on their caravans if they've got the spaces like they have so it's quite out. you found it quite easy to organize yeah. and set up there's and loads of airbnbs there's hotels but they're expensive and people but... helped you along the way and you found yeah. friends and you all just helped each other exactly to keep the costs low exactly so... like we would cook together and I would give them lifts because I had a car and like they, I got, they there's buses to get around Calais but it's not the easiest place to get around mm -hmm. um so I would give people lifts and I had all friends off when they went well like things oh, like that it's all good at least everybody's there with the same it is goal there. to help each other and you're all in the same spirit exactly but was the experience obviously you had a, a vision of what it might be like before you went mm -hmm. was it different to what you perhaps expected definitely I think the help refugee like the whole ca the charity warehouse is an amazing vibe like it's i can only describe it like a hippie commune like everyone's super happy it's freezing cold it is depressing what you're doing but everyone's just so nice and so caring and looks out for each other that it makes such a difference yeah, and when you're working it's like with anything so nice. you're in that atmosphere exactly with with nice people who wanted good do a good thing even if you're not doing a very fun job yeah you're there with purpose yeah you've got music playing like it's it is fun and like we had fun and we it was like there was no pressure like no one was on your back like you need to do this you need to do this like it was just a case of like you it, the jobs always got done you yeah. just picked up the pace if you had to or whatever but um no one was like 
bring like down your neck yeah, or if you, shout if you, at you. Yeah, if I wanted to sit down for five minutes and have a cup of coffee, which they had like a little tea point area, then I was like, I'm out and I'd just go and get a coffee and I'd sit outside and mm. we'd all sit on these camp chairs and just relax. Like, if you wouldn't need to take a breather when you're in an atmosphere like that. Yeah, I it's hard work imagine. as well. It's hard work and you smell because you end up stinking like uh -huh. a, I smell like onions for so long <laughs> after. Like, it's just yeah, like everything day, like yeah. builds up and you need a little bit of a break. Yeah, but definitely. it's really nice. I think with what else with Calais, I guess I was a bit shocked at how. Terrif terrifying I found the experience in terms of the m biggest fear is actually the police ah. because even as a volunteer you're like obviously they are they're not they're not saying they do anything but if they're that's intim their intimidation and it's quite intimidating and they don't agree with what you're doing mm. and I and it's also like we don't face the brunt of it but often the refugees are the ones that face the brunt of it and like knowing that and just being aware of that is quite a lot. Yeah. So that what that I really didn't a bit expect. Of a dividing factor, and you expect the police to always be on your side and have safety, exactly. and then for them exactly. to come and hin try and kind of hinder, like you said, they were taking away tents that you just given out. Yeah, things like yeah, things like that, and like they said, like even you just have to, you can just read across the whole like help refugees website and on their Instagram of the things that have happened and just like tear gas they use tear gas on people and they tear gas the warehouse gate so the volunteers ended up poisoned i poisoned i guess whatever you want to call it yeah. like it's it's quite intimidating and it's quite full-on mm -hmm. and something i really didn't expect probably slightly naively but yeah but you don't know until you physically exactly, go and people exactly. aren't going to write about that before you go because they exactly come. It's and it's, to, to know it's the, the ugly picture. side of the situation and it's not always the public side yeah because no one's going to make the police or the government or whoever really out to be that bad because that's not what the media does that much yeah. not in that sense anyway but from going you obviously learn a lot yeah and there's obviously still obviously they've gone a long way with all their help and the volunteers that have mm -hmm. gone but there's still maybe improvements to be made because people oh, yeah. are still stuck yeah, there. yeah. It's happening I think now. The whole issue is just like way beyond. It's a political issue, and it's always yeah. going to be a political issue. I mean, people say it didn't, but it it's a big thing that was in fa a factor in the Brexit debate. So yeah. it is an issue, and I don't it's, know. Yeah, but it just helps with people like you physically going and helping. Yeah. or even if anybody else wanted to get involved, if you couldn't. If you couldn't physically go to Cali, you don't have to. What, like mm. you said, people can donate clothes. You could, there's all different things yeah, online. Money, that help. anything really. Like yeah. literally any. Even just buy, choose love, the part of the branding off of Help Refugee. Just buy some of the uh, clothing. You can buy it on ASOS. And it's great clothing. I have some of it myself. <laughs> like. <laughs> so Help Refugees, I believe they set up a campaign called Choose Love. Yep. I've often seen it on people's t-shirts. Like their slogan is on bags, on all different things. Yeah. As Fiona says, ASOS are already selling some yep. of their clothing. And then their donations go towards their Help Refugee charity. And they've also set up an online shop as well. Yep. So you you visited the shop when it was yep. all up and running. So what's that all about? So it's, it, it was... Not your usual kind of shop, but it was uh -huh. it was great. It was it's kind of like a bit of a gallery in a way, and you go in and you buy stuff, but you don't buy stuff yourself. You buy stuff for refugees. Uh -huh. So I went in with my boyfriend, and I think we ended up spending like hundred pounds or something. But I think we came out with um, we bought a baby grow, like a thermal baby grow, because it was adorable. <laughs> <laughs> we bought um, I think there was fifty pounds of it or something went to. Um, it was like a, supporting a women's it was giving a woman a chance of support um in a like a care package type thing uh -huh. so you would you could buy things that were like care or like medical care or legal care uh -huh. or um schools we bought some school supplies for a kid so they just get like a backpack and a pen and a notepad and things like that so they could go to school so you physically left with nothing yeah however the things you brought there went directly yeah to the yeah to and you could buy shoes you could buy um some money that can so they had these life jackets and i uh -huh. think people kind of were like you can buy a life jacket and uh -huh. like you're not buying a life jacket you're buying the service of the rescue of the lifeguard rescues uh -huh. that they go out and 
they saved these people because it's still a huge issue. You don't see it as much in the media, mm. but it's still a, it's still a problem. problem. People are still to, trying people to... People have jumped off a boat. Yeah, or... like the boats go... A lot, of the, a lot of the people, when they get on these boats, these boats aren't made to make it all the way. They're made to get halfway and someone comes out and rescues. But the European governments, whatever, the commission, every, the money's being taken away. So these these boats are disappearing so less people are being so it's rescued very important so it's more to dangerous. invest into these life life yeah. jackets but they're actually like life yeah. savers yeah they go it's out not and save it, yeah people. it's not the jacket you're paying for because they don't want to encourage people to do it no. that's not the point but you like you're not encouraging them to do it they're doing it anyway and they're going to do it yeah. anyway because they're desperate so, so you're just trying to help, help them survive yeah so no point in hindering you might as well help exactly so like we did say so for now the shop's kind of closed down however it's all still online mm -hmm. and if you just go on the help refugees website i went on it yesterday yeah you just click their choose love campaign and it's really simple you can look through and like you said earlier it's all about getting giving the right donations and not giving things that could be useless but things that could help and yeah. from there there's also lists about exactly what to donate what's helpful what's not yeah and who it could help so and they update that list constantly yeah. depending on their needs so they might there was actually not many women refugees comparative to men in oh. these places in mm -hmm. calais in northern france a lot of them are young men because oh. that just is the way it works a lot of the women have stayed back and the men have been sent off or the kids yeah. have been sent off so it is men and they're sm they are smaller than like they, there's not a lot of large refugees or extra large refugees so it's like looking at what's needed yeah so like the clothes sizes like you yeah. would have thought oh you're being really helpful maybe sending out extra large clothes but they're not gonna fit. they can't use them so if you just if you are interested in donating just make sure you check online because yeah. like fiona said it's not i know everybody's trying to help but that's yeah. helping the right yeah. in a productive way and if, if you've got that stuff that you don't want then it's going to probably do better in a charity shop yeah. up the road on your high street where they can make money where in the uk there are these people who are these exactly. sizes so any form of donating is fantastic yeah but for you now we're just tailor it. specifically talking about the refugees in calais yeah so for anybody who is interested like we've already spoken about there's many ways you can donate actual physical clothes or items you could also donate money but time, 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 exactly. time is a big one. So for anybody who is interested in going or interested in getting involved in any which way, what advice could you give them? I mean, just don't be afraid to do it. I mean, uh -huh. I was terrified. I was yeah. going on my own. I didn't have anyone going with me. So I proactively went on these Facebook groups, found people to take with me. I was, I was just like, I wanted to have someone. Yeah, it's, it's, I've, it's yeah, even like more said, terrifying. It's nice to know to, that you were terrified to go. Oh yeah, I was petrified i was like what have i got myself into yeah. i was like i've got to do this but i was like uh, my parents were nervous everyone was nervous i mean i was also i was going into a foreign country and driving on the other side of the road yeah, just in my like little that. car I, I rely on my dad for my like mechanical issues yeah so i was like even things like that like i'm over the, the car other side. broke down yeah. what would you do like exactly like oh. and like it's the different laws and everything so you just read up and plan and make yourself prepared mm. but also like the refugee help refugees website is so good at like yeah. telling you what you need making sure they encourage you to like just think about everything like the correct insurance and things like that and check your car has to have certain things on it because we are british drivers we're obviously our lights are programmed differently things right. like that and they actually do like warn you okay i didn't think about it no and, like, i have no idea yeah like they say i had to put stickers on my headlights and things like that which i did yeah. wouldn't have thought about but just be prepared for everything and then yeah like you can never be too prepared. exactly and exactly. helping in whatever which way you can even if it's just donating an yeah. old top or a pair of trousers is extremely helpful because someone is yeah. going to benefit from get it. a buddy to come with you or yeah. go with your company we when i was there we had vodafone there for the day oh. a, bunch, a whole coach of vodafone employees came down and spent the day with working in the yeah. so like if you're in a company and they're that kind of way inclined and like get a rally around a group of your colleagues and spend the day take it's not expensive it's no. not far it's a, it's probably a shorter journey than going to like scotland or somewhere yeah so. and as you said time is more about exactly time and you have to do even just a day especially yeah. now in the winter they really low on volunteers uh, because people are busy and people don't want to go when it's cold no because it's going to be colder in calais than it is here but you also have to remember if it's cold for you it's 
even colder for them yeah so that hot meal that you help prepare or whatever is important yeah definitely definitely well thank you so much no for chatting with us today and for sharing all your thoughts and your stories and your experiences i know i've definitely learned a lot so thank you so much no and i definitely think it was very flamingo of you to physically go <laughs> and physically help and have a direct impact on the lives of all those refugees that you did help while you were there and to physically see it with your own eyes yeah so thank you so much for sharing all of that with all of us mm -hmm. and i hope you all did enjoy the video so thank you for watching and i hope you enjoyed my chat with fiona um and as i as we have kept on mentioning throughout this video the websites help refugees and their campaign choose love yeah i'm going to link all of their information to this video so you can go and take a look and maybe even get involved yourselves